ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming on to Bible study. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm just glad to be here. I'm just I'm just glad I'm just glad I'm just glad to be here. Like I said, I'm 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 using Elder Reston's phrase that he said on Sunday. I woke up. I woke, I woke up. up. Amen. That's with me. I, I woke up. <laughs> you know. Bless us, Jesus. Yes. Yes, amen. Amen. So, um, whoo. ladies and gentlemen, can we please bow our heads for a word of prayer? Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you on today, Lord. We thank you for all the ones that are on here on this lesson for the night, Lord. We thank you for the ones that are trying to get on and who are still not able to get on, but they have it in their hearts to do so. Lord, I ask that you bless the teacher as he gives us the word, the word that you gave unto him. Lord, I ask that you bless all our families, our church families, all our families, all the cultures, Lord, just bless everyone in the world today, Lord. We know we have a whole lot of things going on, but you just showing yourself mighty. you just showing yourself strong. So those who don't believe on you with the signs that we have now, Lord, they need to believe. They need to believe that you are here. Just because they can't see you, it doesn't mean that you're not here. And we are here to let them know that you are here. We are here to show them the way, Lord. We thank you for just putting your word inside of us. We thank you for our pastor who is leading us in the right way to go and all of his clergy on the pulpit with him. We thank you for a mighty pulpit, Lord. We thank you for all our mothers, all our missionaries, our deacons, all the ones, all our lay members, Lord. We just ask that you touch us mightily as we endeavor to go higher and higher in you in this world, Lord. We ask that you touch all the families represented. We ask, Lord, that you touch our children, especially our children, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you bless all of our co-workers, our neighbors, friends, and enemies, Lord. We just ask that you continually keep a covering over us as we go further in you. And again, Lord, just want to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, because you woke us all up this morning, Lord. It was not the alarm clock. It was not the garbage truck. It wasn't people arguing in the parking lot, Lord. It was you that woke us up this morning, and we are so eternally grateful. And again, Lord, just bless us to stay strong in your word, and we'll give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Oh, our lesson, this prayer lesson's been, been holding me up. Prayer helps the believer bless others. We, um, Elder Terrell, did you want me to read the background readings off, or did you want to just dive in to the lesson? Uh, we just I'm anxious to see what you got to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have our teacher on today is Elder Terrell Batson. Can we all please say amen as he comes and give us the word the Lord has given to him? Amen, Elder Amen. 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 Can I me okay? Yes. Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, good to see you all here on tonight, amen. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, lesson seven, and it is prayer helps the believer bless others, amen. So we've been, uh, Sister Andy and I, we've been in this, uh, these lessons have all been about prayer, amen. So we're in the season of prayer, because even at Faith Temple, we have been praying, amen, and fasting every week. So it's right on time, amen. 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 Um, so we have some, we have uh, our background readings, um, which I'll be going through um, in our devotional, which will be in Colossians, and our central verse is Philippians 1 and 19. Uh, so uh, we're just going to get through it. If there's, um, 
I tried to break this up uh, in, into a couple of sections so we can kind of get to uh, the purpose, amen, of fellowship. Because when we talk about prayer helps the believer bless others, we're talking about uh, being a, a help unto other people. And in order to be a help, you have to know and understand what fellowship is, amen? So we're going to get into uh, what fellowship is, uh, how God sees the and views fellowship for Christians and how we utilize fellowship and prayer in order to bless other people. Amen. So um, we can start with our introduction and then we'll get right into uh, the book of Acts in chapter two. So uh, can I ask somebody to read our introduction? Okay, I can do that. Where there is unity, there is strength. When the believer joins his prayer with that of his brother, he can expect something powerful to happen. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew 18 and 20. When a believer prays for another believer, spiritual power is multiplied. Therefore, believers must pray for each other. The principle of Ecclesiastes 4.12 applies for spiritual life and prayer warfare. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. That's in the NIV version. Sometimes to help others through prayer, a believer must enter into warfare prayers. When a person becomes born again, he is born into spiritual into a spiritual family. The believer must know that he is a part of a body that needs the other parts to survive. No man is an island, and no man stands alone. The believers need each other. Amen. 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 Believers need each other. Yeah. In that first uh, paragraph, the introduction, the last sentence says, when a believer prays for another believer, spiritual power is multiplied. Amen. Therefore, believers must pray for each other. Spiritual power is multiplied. Amen. So, um, let's get into our background readings. All right. uh, we'll be in Acts, the book of Acts, the second chapter. Uh, and we'll also be in Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. And we'll be in James, the fifth chapter. So let's start with Acts uh, chapter 2, amen? And I'm pretty sure we're all familiar. What happens in the second chapter in Acts? Anybody know? Something marvelous happened. Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What was that day called, Sister Angie? Day of Pentecost. Day of Pentecost, amen. Thank you, Sister Angie. So this was the outpouring which was promised by who? Who promised this? Jesus. 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 <laughs> and he, he told the disciples, you know, that he would send them a paraclete. He would send them a comforter. Amen. And he would not leave them alone. And this is the prophecy uh, that came into fruition. So in the second chapter of the book of Acts, um, God fulfills this promise. Amen. Hmm. After that, in the same chapter, the second chapter, Peter gives his first sermon. Amen. To the newfound church. And he instructs them to repent, amen, to be baptized and be filled with this Holy Ghost. Amen. That's when we get into our verses. When we start at verse 40, it says, and, many, and with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. Verse 41 says, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 42 says, And they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Amen. So uh, as Christians, uh, God has put, put a big emphasis on fellowship. Amen. Um, and we'll get in more into that later on. But Peter instructs those who have heard the word of God to do three things. To repent, to be baptized, and to receive the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. There is no spiritual fellowship without these things. Amen. Repentance means, a lot of people think repentance means uh, uh, to be forgiven. I mean, or, you know, forgive the sins. Repentance means change of mind, change of course. Right? I'm going that way, I turn around and went the other way. Amen. That's what repent means. Okay? So repentance, to change your mind. Baptism is the outward expression of an inward conversion. Amen. It represents uh, the believer being cleansed and washed. Amen. Jesus himself was baptized. And then receiving the Holy Spirit is what empowers the believer to live and walk in holiness. Amen. Now, if we all have to share in these steps that Peter spoke, that means that we are a part of a spiritual fellowship. Amen. That word fellowship means a community of interest. It means communion between members of the same church. All right. When you look at the word in the Greek text, it just means partnership or communion. All right. So when we fellowship, it's because we are communing together. All right. We're in a partnership with each other. Amen. So in this spiritual fellowship, we share the same God. Right or wrong? Right. I would think so. I hope so. Y'all believe in the same God I believe in. Amen. We share the same God then. Amen. Right. Amen. We share the same love of God. Am I right? You guys love God? I love him. Huh? Amen. We share the same joy, the same peace, and the same power provided by God. Amen. But guess what? We share the same struggles. Amen. Different afflictions, but we all share affliction. Amen. None of us are exempt from struggle and affliction, right? So we share that together. Amen. We share the same gospel. We share the same enemy. Notice how it's not plural, it's enemy. Amen. We got one major enemy that we all share. Amen. We share the same worship because we do it in spirit and truth. Amen. If it's not in spirit and truth, then it's not the same worship. Amen. We share in the same prayer because we're praying to the same God. So this is important because later on we'll see how sharing and fellowship affects prayer and how prayer affects fellowship. All right. So we get it now. We all share. Amen. That means we're all in fellowship together. All right. Let's look at um, James, our background reading, James chapter five. And it says verse 16, but let's start at verse 13. James chapter five, verse 13. And if anybody has it, you might read it at starting at verse 13. Is is any wrong you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let them sing songs. Is any sick amongst you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the of the faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up, and he has committed, wait, I'm sorry. And if he has committed sins, they should be forgiven. Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, for ye may be healed. An effective warrant prayer of the righteous man avails much. Alex, is that it? Yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So that was James. All right. Um, and in the book of James, we'll see how he connects prayer and the fellowship between the believers. All right. Now, Sister Monica just read these verses. We look at that first verse in 13. James says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any married? Let him sing songs. Okay. So if you are afflicted, what 
what James is saying is it's your job to pray. Amen. You. If I'm afflicted, then I should pray. Amen. If any man is afflicted, let him pray. All right. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself. Amen. Nothing wrong at all. Or asking God to give you strength. All right. In uh, chapter four, the previous chapter, in verse two, uh, it says, "Ye have not, because ye ask not." Amen. So there's nothing wrong with asking God. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself, Lord. Uh, I need you to do, you know, this and that. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Amen. If any among you is afflicted, let him pray. And then he says, "Is any merry, which means cheerful, and then glad? Let him sing songs." All right. So if you're cheerful, if you're glad, if you you just feel good in your spirit. Amen. Sing. Amen. Do be do. Do what you got to do. Amen. Sing songs. <laughs> Our life should reflect that of a believer of God. Amen. Our life should reflect that. So our responses should be according to who God is to us as Christians. Amen. So my response to affliction is prayer because I believe God can strengthen or heal me. My response to being cheerful or being merry is to sing praises unto God because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So I know where my joy comes from. So I respond. Amen. But then James changes his tone from the individual prayer to a communal prayer. In verse 14, he says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, uh, verse 13, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Verse 14, if any is sick, let them pray. Amen. That means that there's a difference. There's a difference. It indicates that there is a difference between afflicted and sickness. Amen. There's a difference. When we look at the Greek word for affliction, it's a uh, it's a uh, kakopathio. Amen. Which means to suffer or to undergo hardship or to endure affliction. Amen. To suffer, to undergo hardship. That's what affliction means. When we look at the word sickness, amen, it's asthenio. And that means to be feeble or to be diseased or to be made weak. Amen. So that's two different things. What's the difference? Afflictions are things that we go through. Hardships, things that we suffer as believers. Amen. Uh, now, could that be a sickness? Absolutely. Amen. But. It's not the only thing. Affliction is more than sickness. Amen. You could just have a headache. I don't mean you're sick. That's an affliction. Amen. You could have a backache. That's an affliction. You can be going through something financially. Amen. That's an affliction. It's a hardship. It's a burden. Amen. It doesn't necessarily mean a sickness in the body. But when we talk about, amen, sickness, disease, those are things that's going on. In the physical. Amen? In our physical. So, afflictions are things that are tough to get through. But, James says, you can pray your way through afflictions. Amen? You can pray your way through it. But when it comes to disease, when it comes to sickness, amen, whether it be physical or spiritual, these are things God does not desire the believer to endure alone. Amen? It is not. And we'll get into the power of praying for others and how the term the more the merrier, amen, isn't just a catchphrase. Mm -hmm. All right? But again, these verses highlight how the believer can operate in the fellowship of prayer. When we are in need beyond what we can get through to God ourselves, God is saying, but then call on those, amen? Call on somebody for help. 
Amen. And James makes another indication in verse 15. He says, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. All right. So what's the indication there? Is that when we pray for one another, healing comes when repentance and forgiveness has already taken place. Amen. This is why he says in the next verse, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Amen. So we're talking about how prayer can be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. But what scripture says is that you have to confess your faults, repent, receive forgiveness and through prayer, you can receive healing. What do you mean, confess your faults to one another? Amen. Mm -hmm. I thought I didn't have to uh, confess my sins to men. You know, I thought I'd just go to God, confess my sins to God. You know, in Catholicism, they, they confess it to a priest. Amen. So what do you mean I have to confess my sins to another person? Amen. That's what I used to think. Well, I got nothing to do with them. It's between me and you, God. Amen. So why do we have to confess? Amen. Or why is it uh, the Bible says to confess your faults to one another? What do you mean by that? Amen. What the text means is that if we are in fellowship together, remember, we serve the same God. We share the same worship. We share the same affliction. We share the same struggle. We share the same love. We share everything else. So why not share in confession? Amen? Mm -hmm. That's fellowship. Amen? Mm -hmm. We suffer together. We fall together. We make mistakes together. Amen? We pray together. So if we do all these things together, the Bible says that we should also confess together. Amen? Not that you can forgive me for my sins because you don't have the power to. Amen? But if my prayer can be a blessing to you, then let me know what you're going through. Amen? Amen? Not so I can judge you, so that I can pray you through that stronghold. Why? Because I'm your brother. Amen? I'm your sister. Amen? We are connected together. We share in this fellowship. Amen? Amen? Amen. We as Christians don't do that, though. Amen. We don't do that. We as Christians don't confess our faults. No, maybe we do. Maybe some do. I'm not going to say we don't. Amen. Um, I don't think it's a general practice. Amen. To go around and say, yeah, man, just this is what, you know, because <laughs> a lot of people want to keep what they're going through to themselves. Amen. Which is no, there's nothing wrong with that. But. Amen. If the Bible is telling us to do so, it's for a reason. Amen? It's for a reason. Mm -hmm. All right? So we as Christians, amen, we figure that it's nobody else's business, which is cool. But if we are in fellowship and we share together, you don't have to live in secret sin. You don't have to have the burden, amen, of suffering alone as if your life, amen, it's the only life that goes through something. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're in this together. Amen? Amen. As if no other Christian has issues. We suffer together. You'd be surprised what's going on uh, with your brother. Amen? In Christ. Uh, that you don't even know. Until you speak to him. Amen? And you find out you're going through the same thing that he's going through. Amen? Or you you're going through the same thing that she went through. Amen. But God brought her out. And what does that do for you? When you find out that somebody's going through what you went through, or going through what you're going through, and God brought them out, what does that do for you? I'm asking a question. It gives you assurance that he's going to bring you out. And bring you out. Amen. 
if he did it for sister so and so he can do it for me why because we share the same God amen he's not partial amen amen so if we want healing this is what the scripture says we have to let go of the things that we don't want to confess Amen. And what that does, it'll mentally and spiritually set you free. A lot of the times we're not getting breakthroughs because we're still holding on to the things that are keeping us sick. Mm. Amen. Once you let go of these things, God will heal you. Amen. You keep telling everybody I'm sick. You keep speaking these things into existence. I'm this. I'm that. Start saying I'm here. Start saying I'm delivered. Start saying I'm free. Speak it into existence. Amen? Amen. Confess these things to one another. So that when you begin to pray for that thing, God will heal according to his will. Why? Because it says it in 16. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man and woman availeth much. Amen? It availeth much. God hears it. Now, uh, if we're both righteous, <laughs> amen, and we pray for one another, imagine the blessing that comes from the believer to believer prayer. You believe the same God I believe. So you praying for me and I'm praying for you. God's going to work it out for you while he's working it out for me. And because I'm being selfish in my prayer about myself and praying for you, God's going to bless me. But he's going to bless you because you're being selfish in your prayer and praying for somebody else. Amen. We want, but we want the results, but we don't want to work. And the work is don't always focus on what you need, but focus on the need of your fellow brother. That's fellowship. Amen. That's fellowship. Thank you, Lord. The unbeliever can't bless me. The unbeliever cannot get me blessed. Why? Because they don't have a communication line with God. Amen. Amen. Until they have that communication line, the unbeliever can't get me blessed. But guess what? I can still be a blessing to those that still don't believe. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, God will bless them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And maybe that blessing will cause them to think about who do you serve? Why is it that when I asked you for prayer, amen, that thing came to pass? Who are you talking to? Who is this God you, you're talking to on my behalf that I don't believe in? Amen? Selfless prayer. We talked about that last time. Amen? So, not to say that, uh, you know, you, you just have to pray to get whatever you want, you know. But we have been given a privilege to move the hand of God through prayer because of our fellowship with him and our fellowship with one another. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Any, any uh, thoughts or questions or comments? Uh, I see uh, Sister Russian. see your hand. Yes, I just had a thought. You answered my question that I, that I was thinking. Um, because I was thinking, you were talking about how we um, confess um, to one another. And I was thinking, so us that are here tonight in this teaching, in this learning, in this class, I was trying to think of a rule of thumb. It would be great. Okay, so everybody that's here, we're all getting the same learning and we're all getting the same understanding. So... The ones that are here tonight, not saying no one else can, can do it, but those that are here tonight understand that when we are confessing to one another, it's not to judge, like you said, it's not to judge one another, but it's to help pray one another through. So my, my thought was like, okay, a rule of thumb. Okay, so those that are here tonight, those are great people for me or anyone to come to, to... um confess to the some things that I may be going through or whatever uh, to pray with me. So I was thinking, okay, well, what if I went to a different church, a visiting church, and 
you know, I connected with someone there. Can I, you know, share and maybe, you know, uh, get a prayer with that person? Okay, I go to another church and then, you know, so you don't want to begin to gossip about yourself. So you answered my question when you said the believer. So when you want to, when you need to share with someone and God brings that person to you, you connect with that person. It's the believer. That's, the, if I'm understanding, that's the, it's, that's the rule of thumb. If I could say, you know, rule of thumb, but that's the rule of thumb to kind of go by because, you know, some people, you know, you get to talking and then, you know, uh, now you're, you're, you, people got, people can take your information and gossip about, but if they are the believer outside of the ones that are here that is getting this teaching and, and, and teaching and understanding if they are a believer, we share the same love, we love the same God, you know, that that's the rule of thumb, you know. It, you you want to reach out to the believers. Right. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Amen. And, uh, I'm glad you got that um, because, as you said, um, we have, we some of us, we have, uh, I got co-workers that do not believe in God, right? There's things that I, that I, go through in my life that I won't share with them because I know that they won't understand how to comprehend how I understand. What I mean by that is um, I understand that what I'm going through, uh, God is allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if he's allowing it to happen, it's for my good. And if it's for my good, then he's going to bring me through. Amen. Mm -hmm. For me to share that information for, with somebody that does not believe that, they'll just think, oh, well, you know, you just... You know, either you complain or that's crazy. I don't know how you're going to get through that. And that's not going to be encouraging for me as a believer. Amen. And the reason why we do it, we share and confess our faults to one another in the fellowship, because you should understand being a believer that God is going to work it out. And I get my encouragement from that. Amen. Especially since, again, we share an affliction. You've been through some things that God has brought you through. So. That's what I'm saying. The importance of fellowship with God is because we all understand and know that God is the God of all things. And he allows these things to happen. And when we know that, we can confess our faults to one another because we know that, number one, we're not perfect. Number two, we fall. Amen. We're, we're, we're subject to fall. But we also know that you can get a prayer through for me. Amen. I can get a prayer through for you. Amen. Uh, you can talk to me about whatever you're going through because as my brother or sister in Christ, I'm not going to look down on you as if I don't go through things myself because that would be hypocritical because I'm not perfect. Amen. So I'm going to do what I can as a righteous amen, man of God to pray you through. Amen. And that's the point of the fellowship. And that's the point that I was trying to drive the importance of fellowship. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for, for, for that. Uh, the comments, Sister Rush. Any other thoughts before we move forward? Hmm. I mean, Sister Ann. Um, yes, Elder. Um, oh, uh, Sister T. Did anyone else? I'll, I'll let, go ahead, Sister Angela. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just had a thought that there is a difference in what we're talking about and in just sharing a testimony. Yes, big difference. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. Uh, I was seeing that that a, a testimony you have to a testimony ends with a victory. <laughs> right here, we're we're trying we're trying to get there. Okay, I just want to show the 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 difference, and we're not just talking. I mean, okay, you got what I'm saying because I can see where. You know, a person could just be sharing their faults and thinking of it that they're you know, but you're, we're coming in this respect that we may be healed. Hmm. All right, Sister T. Yes, um, you know, it's funny that um, in my devotion, um, I'm reading um, about James in my devotion, and um, the one thing, and I hope this is not taking me taking everything out of context, is when um, he was um, speaking in um, James 2, when he was speaking from verse. Um, um, one, let me say, my dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim 
to have faith in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ if your favor, if you favor some people over others. And in the way, I'm kind of tying that into it in a way like um, if we're in the body and we're supposed, and we, I need prayer from someone and I'm afraid to go to them because I'm afraid they're going to, you know, tell my business or talk about what I have to say or what I said. But see, when you're in Christ and you're really in Christ and you're praying, and, and another thing I learned about James, I just started reading about James and I'm excited because one, I didn't know he was Jesus' brother. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm like, what? He's Jesus' brother. So I'm excited. So I'm in here and I'm reading it. So forgive me if, if I'm stuttering over my words. So and I'll make it quick as I as I think I can. So as I'm reading in it, it's make it has taught me that if I say I am a believer and I really trust and believe in God and someone comes to me, then I am supposed to this one, it's another thing that James said in there too. We have to listen, ask God for wisdom, wisdom. And then in the part he was saying in, in, in James 1 that you can receive in, endurance. So it's like for me, now that I've learned that one, learn to be quiet and listen and receive. And that way, when a brother or a sister or rather a sister come to you and needs prayer and they can feel that they can trust you to talk to you about whatever is going on in their life. The key factor is serving God and, and having that faith is you want that, that prayer that you're praying for that sister or that brother or that family to be heard by God. That's important. Amen. Absolutely. Man, thank you for that, Sister T. All right. So, um, so now that we 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 we've established fellowship, Amen, and, and what uh what was said uh, here in uh, in the Book of James, what he was speaking about. Let's look at the power of praying for others, Amen. So we got the fellowship aspect, and we know that we're in this thing together. All right. So this gives us uh, the power now with the Holy Spirit that we talked that we talked about in Acts. Amen. To pray for each other. Amen. And see a change. Um, let's go back to the book of Acts in that ninth chapter. I mean, and there's a story here. Uh, ninth chapter and on the 36th verse, 36 through the 40th verse. And um, so in the ninth chapter, a lot of things transpired in this chapter, in this book of Acts. I mean, in this particular chapter, um, several miracles took place. Amen. Um, in the beginning of the chapter, we see the conversion of who? Anybody know? Who was converted? In Acts 9. And then you want to write. All right. <laughs> Paul. Saul. Amen. He was converted to Paul. Amen. And went on to write 13 letters. Amen. Uh, most of the New Testament. So we see his conversion happening, where the light of the Lord shined down on him as he was making his way to Damascus, amen, doing his job. But that was a miracle, amen? It was a miracle. Uh, and then towards the end of the chapter, we see Peter, amen, performs a miracle. He was in the city of Lydda. And while he was there, he healed uh, a paralytic man, amen, who had been bedridden for eight years, amen? Which brings us to our current text. If we look at um, verse 36, Acts 9, 36, it says, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Amen. So, remember earlier we talked about the power of believer to believer prayer. All right. So Peter... We know that he was a believer. Amen. So clearly, Tabitha was as well. Because the verse states, this woman was full of works, good works, and alms deeds. 
All right. Now, someone can have in in their mind, amen, to do good uh, and not do good. Okay. But it says that she was full of works, which means she did it. <laughs> amen. <laughs> it even says that. It says full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Amen. So she just wasn't thinking about doing these things. It just wasn't things that she had in her heart to do. She actually did things. All right. Beautiful. So Tabitha put her work to action. She put uh, her deeds to action. Now, again, that doesn't make somebody a Christian. Amen. Because a lot of people give to the need. And they are saved. They are believers. Amen. They give, you know, they give chari charity and all these things. And they don't even acknowledge or love God. But it said a certain disciple named Tabitha. Amen. Which lets us know that she was a follower. Mm -hmm. Amen. Of Christ Jesus. Because there's a difference between a disciple and a Christian. It shouldn't be. But in today's in today's world, it's, it's a very big difference. Amen. A Christian, by definition, uh, is a person relating or uh, professing Christianity or its teachings. Amen. Whereas a disciple, by definition, is a follower or student of a teacher in regarding Christianity. In other words, it's a follower of Jesus Christ. A disciplined follower. This is where you get the word disciples. It comes from it's the root word of discipline. Amen. Which means that focus. Amen. Act to do it. All right. So Tabitha was a believer. She was a follower. She was a servant. Amen. Of Jesus Christ. Verse 37 says, And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. So, and this verse is very important because it sheds light on what transpired after she died. Now, in those times, it's a lot different now, but in those times, once somebody died, they buried them quick. Amen? So if you died on that day, they had to bury you before sunset of that same day. Amen? Because in those days, the, Jew, the Jews, they didn't embalm their bodies, the dead bodies. They didn't embalm them. So once that person was dead, <laughs> after a couple hours, they started smelling. Amen. So what they would do was they would wrap them in linen. They would wrap them up in linen. Amen. And they would get the burial preparations going real quick. But we see here that when she died, there's no mention of her having burial preparations. It just said that they laid her in an upper chamber. Amen. She was washed and then she was placed in the upper chamber. All right. There's no mention of her being wrapped or prepared for burial, which is why the haste for Peter to arrive. Amen. They wanted Peter to come quick, Peter. <laughs> Verse 38 says, and for as much as little was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So they wanted him to come fast. Tabitha was dead. Amen. If sun if sunset happens and she's not buried, amen, that wasn't a good thing. So they called for him to come real fast. Amen. They needed this thing done quickly. Now, there are several instances in the Bible where we hear that someone is sick unto death and they send for the man of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lazarus. We're all familiar with that. Amen. Mm -hmm. When he was sick, who they sent for? Jesus. 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 Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, Jairus' daughter when she was sick in Mark chapter 5. Who mm -hmm. they sent for? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. It's there for Jesus. And while Jesus was on his way to Jairus' daughter, there was a woman with an issue of blood, and she sent herself to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> while he was making his way somewhere else, she said, I'm going to catch him right here, and I'm just going to grab the hem of his garment. Amen. But mm -hmm. even in doing so, she was healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. While he was being sent, 
she was sinning herself and she still was healed mm -hmm. amen so we know uh, by this that as long as the believer has enough faith in God we can sin for Jesus mm -hmm. amen or we can sin for the man of God that can get a prayer through on our behalf for our situation amen so this is what Peter is doing so Peter is mimicking what Jesus does why because Jesus amen is if you're gonna mimic anybody Mm -hmm. to do what Jesus did. Amen. Verse 39, it says, Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. This is where Tabitha lay. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas, Tabitha, made while she was with them. So Peter arrived. He goes straight to the upper chamber. And while he's in there, these widows, amen, and, 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 and women of God, amen, just like Tabitha was. They're weeping and they're showing Peter these are the things that she made. As if trying to say that she was a good woman, amen. She did a lot. She, she, she did work. She was uh, uh, busy, amen. She did things. She just wasn't saying that she believed, but she had works to go with that. So they're in there weeping. In this chamber. Now, one might consider that the weeping was because the women believed that Tabitha was dead. Sure. They cried. Well, she did. <laughs> you know, that's not what we could do. So we're mourning. Right. That's what you would believe just by reading that. Or they could be weeping because they didn't believe Peter through Christ could change the circumstance. Two things to consider. Amen. We know that is not the case as to why they were weeping. Number one, they sent for Peter after Tabitha had died. Meaning they believed that regardless of her circumstance, that God could do the impossible through prayer and faith if we sin for the man of God. Remember, she was dead. Amen. It wasn't a situation where uh, Lazarus was sick. Amen. When they sent out for Jesus. And by the time Jesus got there, he was dead. Amen. Tabitha was already dead. And they still sent for the man of God, meaning that they had faith Thanks. enough mm -hmm. to believe that a prayer can change the circumstance. Amen. And the second thing to consider is there is no mention of Tabitha's burial preparation, meaning that they anticipated that the man of God could perform the miracle through Jesus Christ and change the circumstance. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Peter does what Jesus did in Mark 5. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And verse 40. It says, but Peter put them all forth. That means he told them to get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. He was in that upper chamber. <laughs> His widow was in there crying. Peter said, get out. He put them out. It says, he kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, Set up. Mm. Amen. Amen. What does that let you know? That if Tabitha was able to sit up that quickly, that she was not wrapped in linen. Amen. Which means that they anticipated for God to perform the miracle through the man of God, through the prayer. All right. This is the same thing Jesus did. Remember when Jesus in Mark 5, mm -hmm. when he went to see about Jairus' daughter. And when he went in there, Jesus did the same thing. He put everybody out. But here's the difference. Jesus put the people out because they laughed at him when he said, the damsel is not dead, but sleeping. They cracked up. This man crazy. Mm -hmm. She's surely dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Jesus put him out. All right? You don't have time for your unbelief. But here, we see Peter tells these faithful women to leave. Why? What's the difference? Amen. Jesus. Amen. 
would cause Jairus' daughter to raise by his own power. Amen. He is God. Therefore, his words can alter the current circumstance. But Peter, on the other hand, needed the power of God. Therefore, Peter needed to fellowship and commune with God. Therefore, Peter needed silence and solitude to inquire of the Lord. So he told these ladies to get out because I've got to pray so that I can be a blessing to this woman who is no longer alive. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's the difference. The prayer of faith requires the power of God. Amen. And sometimes to get the power of God, you need to isolate yourself from the distractions so that you can get the prayer through. Amen. You got a fellowship with God. I got to commune with the Lord. Give me some time. Amen. Let me go into my closet, my secret place. Amen. Amen. So, case in point, when you look at Jesus and his ministry, several things happened when he performed miracles. He prayed before the miracle, and then there are times where he also prayed after the miracle was accomplished. Amen. Uh, when he fed the multitude, the Bible says that after he did that, he went to the mountainside and he prayed. Amen. And it's when you look at it, it's it's as if him praying or him performing a miracle, amen, in his earthly body mm -hmm. drained him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just as the woman with the issue of blood, when she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says that he felt the virtue leave out of his body, which means he felt the power leave. Mm -hmm. Flow out of him and flow into her. Amen. It's very important. Amen. Very important. So when Jesus would perform miracles, after that he would go pray. Amen. It's probably because he was drained. Amen. Performing these spiritual miracles in the virtue leaving his natural body. Mm -hmm. But that's because he was in his natural body as a deity. But for us, it's the opposite. When we pray, we need the power of God to flow into us, amen, so that we can be a miracle through Jesus Christ for somebody else's circumstance. So there's no virtue flowing out of us because we don't naturally have the virtue, amen? But it's by the faith that we have in God that the power of God flows through us, amen? And that's how the miracle for somebody else can be performed. All right. Look at the example. Amen. Of Christ praying after a miracle. When he fed the multitude. All right. He was trained. But he prayed after the miracle. Okay. Jesus does not need to pray before the miracles. He's God. He doesn't have to pray. He could have snapped his fingers. But he was setting an example for who? For you. Amen. If you want miracles to happen, if you want to be a blessing to somebody else, then you have to pray on behalf of them. But your prayer of faith, and I see Rashida say, uh, faith the size of a mustard seed. Amen. The prayer of faith. Amen will get through. Amen. Why? Because the prayers of the righteous, amen, the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth a little. Much. Much. Right? Much. Much. <laughs> Let's see if y'all was listening. Amen. Much. Thank you, Lord. So, Jesus, he can perform these miracles. He can speak things into existence. He can change things. The purpose of prayer was to institute that miracles are produced when the, the communication of the miracles that we want go directly to the miracle work. Amen. So when I want to see a change, 
Hallelujah. When I want to see miracles in my life, then I pray to the miracle worker. All right? That just makes sense. If I want to see, uh, 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 um, you know, somebody teach me how to swim, I'm not going to go get the person that knows how to mountain climb, who don't know how to swim, amen? Because he can't really teach me anything. I'm going to go get the swimming instructor, you know? Michael Phelps is one of those guys that can swim for very long. I'm going to get the person that can handle the job, amen? So when we are talking about praying for other people, Lord, uh, be a blessing to this individual, then we take it to the person who can be a blessing to that individual. But it's through our prayers, amen, and our selflessness and our fellowship with God that we can see a change happen, amen? Amen. So Jesus set the example, amen, that when we ask God, when we inquire of the Lord, that God hears us and he will alter the circumstance. According to your faith and according to his will. Amen. That's important to know because Amen. if it is not God's will, then it will not come to pass. Amen. Amen. A lot of things you pray for, um, and, and just to be straight, uh, you may not get it. Amen. You may not get what you ask for. And it's not because God doesn't want you to have things. It's because it's not his will for your life. But we also must understand that whatever his will is for your life, his will is good. It's perfect and is acceptable. Amen. You may have been praying for this. And God was like, well, no, that's not what I have for you. But what I do have for you, amen, it'll be better than that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, in the story, the outcome was <laughs> that Tabitha woke up. Amen. Like Elder Russian. She woke up. Amen. Why? Because of the power of the prayer of faith by the believer who has the ability to reach. God, don't you know that every single one of you on this Zoom has the ability and the privilege through prayer to reach God? That's not something to take lightly because there's a lot of people in this world that don't have that privilege because they don't know God. Hallelujah. So the fact that I can sit here and talk to him on behalf of my brother on behalf of my sister and that God can be a blessing to them because of who I am to him hallelujah that's a privilege that we shouldn't take lightly amen amen thank you Lord but here's the thing if you are also a believer you should have the ability to reach God through prayer as well so some people might say well why am I praying for you if you're a believer how come you can't pray and reach God people will tell you <laughs> people will tell you and let's get into the strength of together say man let's see what, what, what the Bible says about that any other thoughts or questions before we move forward Amen. Let's uh let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's talk. Let's 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 see what uh, see what the answer is. Let's see what the scripture says about this. If you are a believer, Amen. Why am I praying for you? Anybody have uh, a thought? If you are a believer, then why should I, as a believer, pray for you? Because he says, when two or more are gathered, I am there. You're straight to scripture. Yeah, I'm just going to say, right here. Right here in the, in the book. That was in the, it's, it's in the book. Matthew 11 and 14. Yes. It's the man. Cause they strength, their strength may, like their belief or their faith may be down. So, you as a believer, you praying for them, is hoping them get their prayer through. 
I think that um, it talks about like we told we just spoke about when when someone like has, has Galatians talk. I know Galatians talk about it like if someone has been taken in a fall. You know what I mean? Like you you pray to them, so you're helping them. Like you don't. Sometimes people they they at their wit's end. Even they, even believers get down sometimes. So prayer helps. And you know, or they may not be able to pray for themselves. Like we watched the movie either last year about the little boy being in a coma. He wasn't able to pray for himself. So he needed someone to actually be able to pray for him. And it wasn't just his parents that were praying for him. It was the church. It was the community that came through and prayed for him. And that actually saved him and brought him back because he wasn't able to do it for himself. So I think that you just because you're you're a, a believer doesn't mean that you don't need help. And you don't need anyone that's around you to, to pray for you. Well stick, well stick. And that's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Let's look at um let's go to Ecclesiastes. Uh the fourth chapter. And I start at the ninth verse. And it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10 says, For if they fall the one will lift up his fellow fellowship. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Verse 11 says again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Amen. Verse 12, and if one prevail against him, who shall stand with withstand him? And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. I think that uh, puts it in perspective. Amen. We know that God is a God of communion. Amen. God is a God of communion. If you look at who God is, He is a triune being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is three. And one. So he himself is a community. Amen. When he made Adam, he said that it was not good for man to be alone. So he took a rib from Adam and made woman. Amen. Community. Fellowship. So God is a God of community. He is a God of fellowship. He is a God of togetherness. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Look at you. You may say, well, I'm an individual. You are made up of three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. Amen? So guess what? You alone are still a community within yourself. Amen? Matthew 18 and 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together unto my name, there, I, there am I in their midst. Amen. Two or three. Fellowship. Community. God wants more than just one. He likes one. Don't get me wrong. But when it's more, there's more. Amen. When it's more prayer, there's more power. Amen. When it's more glory, amen, there's more of his presence. Amen. When more hands lift up, more blessings come down. Amen. So God is a God of more. He's an awesome God. Amen. We cannot contain him. Thank you, Lord. So God wants things to be done communal, together. All right. And we see that through scripture. We can see that throughout the scripture. Although he uses and blesses us individually and salvation is a road, amen, that's walked along. It does not mean that we do not have resources outside of the source which is God. Remember, this is the body of Christ. Amen. You and I are part of the body of Christ. Amen. When you look at your hands, you have one hand, but on that one hand, you have five fingers. You got about hundreds of lines. You probably got some wrinkles somewhere. 
amen that hands connected to that wrist which has a bunch of the metal tarsals and metal particles all in there and that wrist is connected to the elbow which also has a bunch of bones amen so even though there are individual things on the body they make up many amen you got one rib cage with about 10 ribs on it <laughs> amen you have one spine but you have many discs amen so one can be many and this is what god is trying to teach us that when you are in the fellowship of who i am one is many so if you are going to pray and you just want to pray by yourself that's fine but when you grab your brother and when your brothers grab your sisters and when your sisters grab your aunties and when we collectively pray together hallelujah god he sees that communion god he sees that community the devil don't like community he does not like community he doesn't like anything that has to do with taking somebody else and putting them together with other people because he knows that where there's strength or where there's numbers there's strength amen so we are the body of christ first corinthians 12 and 12 says as or for as the body is one and has many members Amen. And all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also Christ did. Amen. 14 says, for the body is not one member, but many. Amen. Meaning I'm just one part of something that has so many members. So when I'm in need of prayer, I shouldn't just feel that I'm alone in my communication with God. But since we are of that same body, amen, that same spirit, amen, that same fellowship, amen, because we serve the same God, amen, and we love him the same way, amen, because we share the same Holy Spirit, amen. Some of the members can intercede on my behalf. Why? Because we share the same God. Amen? Not because I can't do it on my own, but because together we are stronger than we are separate. Amen? Mm -hmm. Together we are stronger than we are separate. And Martha says they're strengthened in numbers, the warriors. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Strength in numbers. Just like the warriors at a market. <laughs> Verse 9 though. Two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. What does that mean? It means that if I'm working on a job and I'm working on something alone, I may be able to accomplish it. And yes, I'll get a good reward. Amen. But when I have someone to help me get to the desired end, it's a greater reward for the lady. Why? Because the blessing includes the individual who was a blessing to me. Amen. And it's always better when my brother can be a blessing and receive a blessing. Amen. And that's what God is all about. It's okay for us to be blessed. Amen. But it's even better when I know that my brother is going to be blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if we can work this thing together, there's a greater reward for both of us. Because not only one of us is being blessed, but both of us are being blessed. You understand? Mm -hmm. Amen. Philippians. Second chapter. Verse 3 through 5. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man at his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus meaning I can't be a blessing to you if I don't consider you more important than myself Amen. So how can I get a prayer through when I place myself above you? I'm not praying for him. 
I still got stuff that I want that God ain't gave me. I'm not going to pray for you. <laughs> Amen. That's that's not fellowship. Amen. That's not fellowship. Sister uh, Amanda, I see your hand. So I was just, uh, even though I said he was praying, uh, Moses, when he was at the top, when he was at the top of the mountain and he needed help to raise his hands or keep his hands raised up and they had to go up there with him to accompany him because he had gotten tired. So, I, so to me, that's just like an example or a representation of you needing other people to sometimes help you along to continue your journey, even though you have to get it's, it's, it's like that's that's kind of like the example I thought of. It's him having right. to keep his hands raised up and them coming like Aaron, Aaron and them coming to help him to keep his hands up so they could finish the journey that they were on along with him, even though Moses was the one that had to do it, but he needed help to get it done. Amen. Perfect example. Amen. Anybody know who Simon the Cyrene is? Simon the Cyrene. Simon. He was the man that helped. There you go. <laughs> Amen. He was the man that helped Jesus carry his cross. And this is Jesus, our risen Savior. But he's the example. Amen. Fellowship. Amen. Your prayers. Amen. It can be a blessing for somebody else. But you have to think about other people. Amen. You have to love other people. Amen. The Russian wrote, one can chase a thousand and two, ten thousand. That's the Bible. Amen. Together we're stronger. Together we're stronger. Sister um, Mandy, did you have another question? Uh, I just left for my hand. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, no problem. All right. So, um, we're ready. Verse 10. It says, for if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he hath not another to help him up. So none of us are as strong as we think we are. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. You may think you're strong. To that one common come along. Amen. And you like, whoa. <laughs> this is a tough one. Amen. This is a tough one. Some of us know we are strong. Amen. But there is no strength provided by man that is able to carry himself through this life without help. Amen. There is no strength provided by man. None that can carry you through this life without help. Now, if you can do that, amen, it's not done through strength. It's done through pride. Because pride is a false sense of strength saying that, you know what, I can do this. I don't need nobody help. I got this. I'm a man. I can handle this. I don't need nobody to, to, to help me out. And that's a false sense of strength. Because if Jesus needed, amen, Simon to help him bear his cross, what makes you think that you're not going to need somebody to help you bear your cross? Somebody to help you get a prayer group. Somebody to help you get the blessing that you've been praying for. Amen. Don't deny someone saying, oh, I'll pray for you. But you know, there's people that say, uh, uh, when you say, I'll pray for you, no, I don't need you to pray for me. <laughs> if, I, if you say that to me, please do. <laughs> I'll pray for you. Please do. Amen. Because there is no amount of strength that I have where I can deny, amen, the prayer from my brother or sister. Has to say, no, nah, I'm good. I got it. It's cool. I got, I'm, I'm at where I'm at. Even if I feel, or even if you feel like you're at where you need to be at, you can always get higher. You can always get stronger. Mm -hmm. You can always use more joy. You can always use more peace. Amen. There's a, an affliction around the corner that you may not even know about. And somebody is praying on your behalf. So when that thing comes, hallelujah. Some of us may not be saved if it had not been for the prayers of our mothers, of our fathers, of our grandmothers. It was a blessing to us. Amen. Amen. to you. Amen. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, what it's saying is, 
that we need to hold each other up in prayer. Amen. I can give you food. I can give you water. I can give you money. I can give you uh, the things that are physical and tangible. But how can I provide for you spiritually? How can I be a blessing to you spiritually? I can pray. Amen. I can pray for you. I can pray with you. Amen. Amen. Twelve verse. It says, and if one prevail against him, who shall withstand him? And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. There's one. He said that I can have two. Amen. And we can stand up to that one. But if I have three, you can't break us. Amen. Imagine if I had four. <laughs> Imagine if I had ten. Amen. The more the merrier. Not too long ago, we talked about spiritual warfare. Amen. And I asked the question, if the believer has a connection with God, that's what I asked earlier. If the believer has a connection with God, why should I pray for them? Amen. If you have a connection, then why should I pray for them? Amen. And Ecclesiastes, it lets us know why. Because one prayer is okay. But two Three, four, five, the church, amen. <laughs> Just like Sister Amanda said about the movie, they had a whole neighborhood praying for that young man. And God healed him, woke him up out of a coma, delivered him, amen. Now the Russian uh, had his, his, his accident, amen. I know the church was praying. I was praying, and God woke him up, amen. He's here. Why? Because of the prayers of the righteous. They evade as much. Amen. Can you imagine being in an army full of soldiers? I'll leave you with this. You're in an army full of soldiers. Amen. And we are all on the same team. And we're fighting against the common enemy. And somehow you get isolated and cornered and the enemy is attacking you. You're by yourself. And he's wearing you up. Amen. By yourself. And I see you, and I'm wearing the same arm. And I look over, and I say, "Well, he got a weapon. Why you need mine?" Amen. I take that and apply that to prayer. Take that same analogy. You're going through some things. Amen. Well, they know how to pray. Why they need mine? Amen. It's not that I have the weapon. It's that I'm currently fighting for my life when I'm a part of an army with other capable soldiers that shouldn't mind fighting with me regardless of my ability to do so or not. Why? Because we are an army. And when one man is down, I should be able to go and help serve my brother. And be a blessing to him when I see him isolated and feeling like he has nobody to turn to. Amen. The mindset of prayer shouldn't be they need to figure it out. They need to just pray it through. The mindset should be let me pray for you. Let me pray with you so that I can be a blessing to your situation. Amen. Because if the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much, that means that there is a requirement for the believer to do so. Amen? Prayer wasn't a, well, if you want to. The Bible doesn't say that. Prayer is not optional. Amen? It's not an optional thing. For the believer, it is a requirement. Because this is how we communicate with God. And this is how we can communicate on behalf of our brothers and our sisters and to others. Amen. And I know we're focusing on the believer, but we ought to be praying for the unbeliever as well. Amen. Just because you do not believe in God doesn't mean that you do not get my prayers. Amen. Actually, the fact that you don't believe in God, we should be praying more for the unbeliever. That they get God. Amen? Because they have no hope without God, whereas you and I, we have hope. Amen? 
We have hope. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I'll leave you with this last scripture. Second Chronicles. And we all know the scripture. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Anybody know it? Second Chronicles 17 and 14. If my people which are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then what I hear from heaven is forgive their sins and heal their land. It's my people shall call by my name. Amen. Mm-hmm. He didn't say if Moses, if Elijah, man. <laughs> he said my people. Yeah. All of you. Mm-hmm. Every last one of you. Mm-hmm. Pray. Humble yourself. Amen. Think about your other. Amen. Why does God have so many angels? Amen. That praise and worship him. He could have just ordained one angel to consistently praise him. He could have just said, made Michael and said, your job is just to praise him. Amen. But no, he has millions, thousands, billions of angels, a multitude. Amen. It's because God deserves all of the praise, not just individually, but in multitudes. Amen. It's the same with prayer. One prayer heard by God is great. But when there's a multitude, Mm. when we are interceding, which is one of our key terms, amen, when we are interceding for one another on behalf of him, he gets more glory, amen, because he hears prayers that have nothing to do with us wanting to be a blessing to ourselves. But selfish prayers for those wanting to be a blessing for somebody else. Amen. And that's pleasing to the ears of God. Mm. Amen. I'm hearing a multitude of prayers. And ain't nobody talking about them. Amen. He praying for him and she praying for her. And all of these people were praying for everybody else. But I'm going to be a blessing to all of you. Amen. All of you. Why? Because he loves us. Amen. So let us practice on praying for one another. Amen. So that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Because somebody's going through something. They may not ever tell you. Amen. But this lesson should, should, should teach us tonight. That we should learn. Amen. Or get into the habit of just confessing. Amen. Our faults to one another. Uh, whether they be faults or whether they be things that we're going through. Amen. Because we should be here for one another. Amen. And, 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 and we are a family. We are the body of Christ. Amen. And my right hand. I'm right-handed. My right hand is strong. Amen. But it doesn't mean that my left hand is not essential. Amen. Because if I can pick up a pencil with my right hand, but if you ask me to go pick up a table, well, I need both. Although this is my predominant hand, I still need both to do the bigger work. And that's what God's saying. Amen. One of you are important. But I need all of you so that we can do the bigger work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So that we can be a blessing to others. And for those who don't know who he is, they'll see us and how we fellowship. They say, I want to be a part of that. Because the streets would tell them, and the devil would tell them that everything they need is out there. But they don't know that everything they need is in God. And sometimes they only are going to read us. They're not going to pick up the Bible. They're not going to go to church, but they're going to look at the church. If they don't see an example that they can learn from, they'll never come. Amen? Mm. They will never come. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will give you back into the hands of our president. And uh, if there's any questions or comments, amen, I will leave you in her hands. God bless you all. Uh, thank you, Elder. Well, I was uh, wondering, was there any more last questions for Elder Terrell before I give it over to the hands of Pastor. But Elder, I also like what you said about the room. And, and you talk about even though you have two hands and it's just you, it's too big and you can't by yourself. So you might have to 
Can you help me move this table? Two people is good, but if you had four people, one on each side, it'll be easier to move. I mean, so ladies and gentlemen, can we please, please, Elder Terrell back then. Beautiful and they're wonderful. So I'm glad um, that you were able to make it on tonight. Uh, we do appreciate you coming in, um, showing up, whether it's by Zoom or by the telephone. This is what this is what the church is all about: learning together and uplifting one another. So I am going to turn you over to one of the pastors in the whole universe. Seven participants. Praise oh, Lord. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And that's 27. We thank God for each and every yeah. one of you that got on the line on tonight. It was just a blessing. And this was a beautiful lesson, a lesson that we all need. And I just wanted to say to everybody, right? You don't even have to unmute yourself. Just say, um, uh, Lord, bless my brother Lord, and my bless sister. Bless my brother and my sister. Right where you are. Lord, bless my brother and my sister. Now what I need you to do is say, Lord, touch Mother Lindau right where she is right now. Oh God, as we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking. She needs you. Oh God, and we thank you. Not just her, but there's others. But she's on our mind right now, oh God struggling through some pain yes, but yes. lord you are a healer you are a deliverer and we thank you oh god we thank you tonight for this lesson we thank you for the teacher thank continue you. to anoint him yes. and let him give out as you give to him yes, lord and we believe yes. that what we're praying for is going to be done mm. why because can't nobody do it but you and we thank you tonight. Thank you. We praise you tonight. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Jesus. The essential thought tonight says, remember that God hears and answers prayers for others as well as you. Mm-hmm. Elder Terrell, once again, God bless you. We thank God for you. We're praying for each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. I thank God that um, even more this year is starting to get on zoom let's keep pushing our brothers and sisters to come to bible study this was beautiful tonight we thank god for you sister marcia we seen you get on a little or a little later and also mother kid god bless you for getting on you know what i love you and it ain't a thing in the world you can do about it god bless you is our prayer God bless everybody. God bless you. Bye, Monica. Bye.